Okay, I'm Ellen Sund from Coda Collective. Uh, it's my own company, and uh, my title is Creative Technologist, which actually describes what I do uh, normally uh, in my day job. I'm actually creative with technology. And uh, it can be a combination of different technologies, and often it's actually connecting hardware with internet. But throughout the years, I actually been in contact with things like the unexpected API that my talk is about. Um, actually data that's around us that we can use in other ways. Uh, and a few years ago, I got the assignment to actually uh, use uh, an API that's built on cameras. And uh, this API and this uh, technology is from TrackGab. It's a Swedish company that uses 16 cameras on football pitches to actually um, track where people are on the football pitch. This technology is from the military from the beginning to be used with fighter jets to actually determine the targets and shoot them down. But TrackGab, they actually decided to use this to actually track things on the sport arena. And in this case, the football uh, pitch and they could actually in real time see where people were moving on the football pitch by stitching together uh, these different images of the cameras and in real time they could actually get the position of each player uh, 25 times a second and why was I in this project well uh, the reason was that we would actually uh, use this data for something. And the idea was to actually use this data for people that are on the football pitch, but they don't know where they are. And people who don't know where they are on the football pitch are blind, and they play blind football. So what if we could use this data to actually uh, get the players to know where they are with the help of sound? Uh, with the track up system, we actually get out all the players and we can actually use this for instance with statistics. Uh, during a game they actually can see uh, how the play is going on and where the different players are during the whole entire game and they can actually save this data. But what if we can use this data in real time and actually use it for people who play blind football. Blind football is um, a sport in Paralympics, and uh, you basically, uh, all the players are blindfolded, so you get the same kind of conditions. And in the ball, it's a shaker, so you can actually hear the ball. But if the game actually stops, the ball gets thrown away from the players. You can't hear the ball. So what if, with the help of this technology, blind people would actually hear where the ball is, even though it's still? And looking at the blind football arena, it's a bit smaller than a normal football game. And basically, you have guides uh, that shout all the time, so people actually can detect where they are on the football pitch. Uh, and, they, and this is just a way to actually notice if you're close to the goal and actually also get some kind of commands on what to do when you're close to the goal. Uh, so with this uh, setup, you're quite dependent on people around you. But if you would use, for instance, all the data that TrackUp have and actually put it into an iPhone and convert it to sound, could that be a way for people to actually play football in another way. Well, the assignment was uh, quite uh, huge because you could actually use different ways of doing this. And uh, why would an iPhone be used? Well, you have sensors and you could actually put an iPhone onto your body to notice how you move. Uh, and you can get the data to each phone. And you can, for a specific player, you could actually uh, get your uh, kind of information where you are on the pitch and where everyone else is on the pitch. So th this was just a test with the 
Trackeb API to actually get the data out, see that uh, through uh, UDP data and the, the UDP protocol actually get uh, this data as fast as possible to all the different iPhones. Um, and actually use sound to determine what's happening on the pitch. And not only sound, but 3D sound. So actually converting what we know is happening on the pitch to 3D sound. And for you who don't know what 3D sound is, it's not stereo, because stereo is uh, the left and right. You can determine if the sound is left and right. It's actually where you can hear it in front of you, but also behind you. So if you are on the football pitch and you can't see, you could actually get a sense of where the goal is, uh, and you could get a sense of the nearest player, and you can actually hear it like we do in reality. And with the help of the sensors on the iPhone, you could actually detect if people move their head and shift the sound landscape. So we're taking all the data from TrackUp and actually converting it to a virtual sound landscape for people that can't see. And here's just uh, to show how we can try out different sounds. This is done in a program called FMOD that's used for World of Warcraft, Guitar Hero and a number of different games to actually place out sound and uh, get them to react in different ways. And this was just an example of the goal. So here I actually have the, the goal and I can actually determine how the goal sound would sound like if I'm close to it, it might sound a bit louder. And with the gyroscope, I can also sense if I move my head. So this is just a test to actually uh, get different sounds depending on how you move your iPhone. But as some might know, the gyroscope can be drift a little bit, so as you move it around, uh, after a while the reference actually changes. So I used the GPS to determine, uh, as a reference point, to determine uh, where you were. So as soon as the GPS was stable, that was a new reference point. And since we were out on the football pitch, I could use the GPS because it was open air and nothing that actually disturbed it. Uh, and for this, we put the iPhone on the head. Uh, so, um, to put it just uh, on top of the head, you can actually detect as people move their heads that the sound landscape would shift. Um, and here's just a demo showing the different sounds. And here are the ingredients. Uh, so the result actually became uh, using the TrackAB API and actually converting it to 3D sound. And now I see some question marks in the audience. So I'm going to show a film. I am Daniel Jönsson, I am 20 Jag blev synskadad för typ fyra, fem år sedan. Så innan dess har jag spelat massa fotboll och hållit på med allt, allt som alla andra här är. Ja, nu har jag inte hållit på med så mycket idrott. Pepsi is funding amazing ideas that refresh the world. Together we created something that lets you experience the world in an entirely new way. It's a technology that enables you to see with sound. test, we arranged a football match between visually impaired players and former professional footballers. We wanted to see how they would perform under equal conditions in a match where no one can see. It was an um, internal Wi-Fi where all the data was sent from the iPhones and to up to the system. What 
we have is a tracking system with 16 cameras covering the entire pitch. We can get the position of each player in real time. The information is then fed into an iPhone, placed on the player's head and converted to surround sound. Each player can hear what's happening and get a sense of distance between things. Sinnen, helt enkelt. Och det är man inte riktigt van med vid att liksom, uh, och lyssna och sådär. Och... I think in the future this technology can be used in other arenas than in the sport arenas. As people who can't see can actually get information about the environment around them. Det är jäkla roligt helt enkelt. Det är väl det man kan. Jag kommer minnas det längre men det är klart. This would be something that we would have in not just the sport arena, but actually uh, indoors in the central station or in the city. Well, there are different attempts to do this. With Blind Square, for instance, you can actually hear things around you. And you can actually uh, use the Blind Square API to uh, link your um, destination or your place to this uh, app and get it open there. And basically, uh, as you move it, it actually tells what's where in which directions. But it's also the unexpected data. And I think talking about this, this is cameras, but you could actually use other things, like I work a lot with hardware. And uh, I think a great example is Pendelkollen. Uh, it's an app for uh, SL here in Sweden, the transport, uh, transportation system in Stockholm. And um, uh, basically, they noticed that on the cars of the train, you actually have sensors detecting the weight of each car. What if we could actually use that to determine where you can get a place in, uh, in each car? So this data was exposed to the end user. So they could actually, in the app, see which uh, blob here, which is green uh, or red, which one I could use because the weight of the passengers would actually say something about my possibility to get a seat. I also worked with the unexpected data of actually getting uh, uh, the energy, consumpti uh, energy consumption of users actually using the data of um, uh, the meters, the electricity meters. And as I often work with marketing and marketing concepts, this was a way to do the biggest energy experiment for E.ON and basically showing 10,000 households energy in real time and in that way actually changing uh, the way people saw uh, their own energy. Uh, and this is also an interesting unexpected API in a way because you could actually, if you measured all the energy in a city, you could actually de detect how people move around and what's happening. Uh, but this was just for uh, 
like a marketing campaign and this is how it played out if you could actually see how much electricity you use would it change your behavior we decided to find out together with eon one of sweden's largest energy providers we created sweden's largest energy experiment we recruited 10,000 participants and gave them a special app connected to their homes that monitored their power usage in real time then During the course of one year, we visualized their energy consumption in five different ways to see which one would make them save the most. We started off by showing their energy consumption as real money spent in real time. Next up was a virtual battle between participants. Later, a mean coach spurred you on to save more. And finally, your consumption was linked to a cute Tamaguchi that died if you didn't save enough. Our participants were only the beginning. Around them we built a larger campaign. We created a site where everyone could follow their progress. You could see who saved the most or least energy, compare different parts of the country, and even compare your own consumption to others with similar homes and much more. As a key part of the campaign, we let everyone share their best energy saving tips, which we turned into a book, outdoor units, and even TV spots. News of the experiment spread throughout Sweden. And the result? Seeing how much energy you use will make you save a lot. By the time the experiment was over, our participants had reduced their energy consumption by an average of 12%. And by the way, last year The world's total energy production provided by nuclear power plants was 12%. Now imagine if the whole world would join the experiment. Yeah, so this API was actually built just for this campaign, trying to compress the data of 10,000 households and uh, their consumption in real time. Imagine this being available for a city uh, throughout the years, comparing what's happening. For instance, in the UK, uh, they can actually spot which TV show is on by actually looking at the consumption of electricity because people are putting the kettle on just before the popular program. But also, since I do uh, hardware, I use APIs and the more expected ones uh, is probably, for instance, using Facebook's API and actually knowing when you, for instance, check in or like. And with this data, you could actually do something and control something in real time. And in this way, it's uh, just making uh, a like into a candy. But thinking about that, everything is controlled with motors and stuff, and we can actually get into existing systems and existing machines and hook them up to the APIs. And this is just an example of using the same kind of method, checking in and checking the number of check-ins and actually getting a cold drink. And that takes us into sensor land, which is really like uh, exploding at the moment. And it's basically the big range of uh, sensors that we have out there. And many of them have been around for many years. Like, I don't know how long the button has been around, but it's basically a circuit that closes or opens. But we can also see things like RFID being used, mostly in transportation, but it can also be used in marketing purposes inside stores. We have all the sensors that you actually carry with you, like accelerometer, gyroscope, and GPS but also things like humidity sensors, gas sensors, and you can actually control these with these circuit boards that are available. Uh, like the few that are the most popular are Arduino and uh, Raspberry Pi that you can actually get uh, from Shell and Company. And looking at into the future, the, a lot of things are happening with the sensors. And we can actually measure things like our blood sugar levels, and we can measure uh, the city and the air. And uh, there are things being done. And in this case, I could actually uh, use a quite big circuit board to measure this.
but today I can also use quite small ones that are connected with Bluetooth, for instance. And there are also circuit boards available to actually create mesh networks where we can put out our own sensors and actually create our own data. And there are a number of different examples of that. And one of them is uh, Smart Citizen that actually tries to create their own data by actually measuring how the city uh, feels. And they actually provide an API with that as well. So it's really interesting that you can actually create that uh, with electronics and with APIs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you. For this. Very interesting. So here's a small gift from us. Thank so you. Thank you for that.